have the uh, lectionary readings today. And this message comes from um, 1 Samuel. And uh, the message that we seem to be getting today through these four readings that, that we have today is that we cannot hide from God. Now, that's if effectively what was happening here with uh, Eli. And uh, Samuel was raised up. Um, and he was going to become the new, uh, the new man that God had for that time. So, as we look at these verses, uh, you know, um, we're going to be looking at some things that people are probably going to find a bit difficult, as in Scripture sometimes it happens, and certainly a lot of controversial stuff. So, I would ask you to just uh, hold in your heart the fact that God wants to teach us um, what he wants rather than what the world says is okay and what the culture says is okay and so on but also to read between the lines of the literal words on the page to look for the spirit of the law the spirit of god underneath it and what god really wants to show us okay so as i say this is this is well this is an amazing opportunity really these verses to see the importance of, um, of what's really happening in the world today and the kind of purest attitudes of the church through the ages in hypocrisy uh, and the reality that we have no need to judge either because God alone will judge um, because God alone obviously sees everything and knows our hearts, doesn't he? So, and we know that it's about loving and uh, it, it, it's about our motives, our heart motives, whether we love God or not. That's the important thing. But what really comes through these verses today is, is the whole sense of we cannot hide from God. And we also cannot um, ignore what God says to us. And each one of us has to stand and give an account for our life. And, you know, God is, is a God who is holy. And uh, so we have to look at things sometimes which we feel are a little bit hard to, to swallow. We're getting into whole food now, not just the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but whole food. But bearing in mind all the time, I, as a precursor to this message I'm saying to you, it's about loving each other. And it's about the fact that in Christ, when we really come to Christ, and when we're really in Christ, remember the last week's serves about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that we were really in Christ if we were if we are baptized in the Holy Spirit and then in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so one of the things that's important is to know that when we are we are washed we are made clean so regardless of what we've done before all things become new and that's really important but looking at this here one of the things that comes to to, um, to mind really is that Samuel sorry uh, Samuel was the man of the moment coming into this situation but we have to also see that Eli was the man who was going to be going out yes. and Eli was very very old um, talks about the age of about 95 but he had two sons Phineas and uh, Hophnil and uh, these two sons were, in effect, um, evil in the sight of God. They were priests. You've got to bear in mind that these were priests. So this, was a, this is an added responsibility. And one of the things that we, we know about, about God is that you know, he expects us to be faithful according to what we understand and what we know. He's not an awful God who doesn't kind of show us things. And so we're not, we're, we are without excuse really because we can see God's hand in creation. We can turn and say, well, I don't believe in God, but God's hand is there all the way through. We can see God in creation. And although that may not be sufficient to save us, it does actually give us a conscience. It does actually point us in the right direction. And then we come and we find God's word speaking out and we can, we can then find reconciliation with the Holy God. But when we are in a position of, of responsibility before God, especially as, as, uh, as believers, 
and, and, and as uh, ministers of the gospel, something more important is e expected and asked of us, and God will hold us accountable for the people in our charge too. So there is a pressure that when we come to those areas of scripture that we really don't want to preach on, because we know that it's going to hurt and upset some people because they find certain things difficult, it's a really difficult job to do. But having said that, you have got to leave it to every man's conscience and you have to let everybody make their peace with God and come to their own level of understanding what God in, wants in their lives. At the same time, there is no church that has all truth. No church. I'm sure there are areas that we are in error, even though we don't mean to be in error. There are things that we take for granted, there are things that we preach according to the word of God, and maybe in our understanding we have missed something, some slight thing, we may be a different accent on something, slightly different understanding. But the whole point for me is that as I go through the scriptures, I try to look for what, what was God trying to say to me? What was God trying to get across to me? Because he has my best interest in heart. This is the God of the heaven who loves me. This is our Father God of heaven who wants those who he calls to himself to to have all the good things that he has in store for us, all the riches of his grace. But here we are, we have two priests and, uh, and Eli himself. And what would happen is that uh, as far as God was concerned, they were wicked because they would, they would take the offerings that people would bring into the, to the, uh, to the synagogue, to, to, or to the temple in Jerusalem, to actually sacrifice, and they were, they were not in Jerusalem at that time, but um, they would take the offerings, this is the important thing, and when they would take the offerings, they would take the best parts of it and, and take them for themselves first before they would sacrifice the offering. And what was supposed to happen is the meat was supposed to be boiled, and then they were supposed to dip in a fork, and whatever came out, that's what they had for themselves. Whereas they chose to take the best bits before they even put it anywhere near the sacrifice on the altar. You see, so that was what was going on. They were also laying with the people that were at the door of the temple to come in. They were laying with the women that were coming in to the temple. Okay? So, basically what happened is the people began to get really upset and they didn't really want to come and offer anything to the Lord at all. Because they could see this total hypocrisy here with the way the priests were behaving um, in this situation. So this is something that you know, we have to be aware of. We have to understand that as you know, when we become ministers of, of God's word, when we, when we become servants of God in the true sense of the word, and we, we call ourselves Christians, and even more so if we call ourselves ministers, or if we call ourselves priests, then, then there is a responsibility with that. There's something else in that, that we have got to um, take on board. We have got to realise that there is a responsibility here. And this is a situation where the Lord was speaking to Samuel. And uh, unfortunately, he had a word for Samuel that was, in effect, like a, a pronouncement of, of what was going to happen to Eli and, and the, sin, the sin's consequences. So you see, it wasn't a very good message. And there is God's man, Samuel. He's only a young boy in the temple. But at the same time, God gave him something to say that he didn't really want to. So on a human level, I'm sure that on a human level, he loved old Eli. Because Eli took him under his wing and he was teaching him. And You know, we have this goes on in the church all the time where where older people take on younger, more mature Christians, teach younger Christians, and, and so he loved Eli. And he was a man of God, a boy who was, um, had a heart for God, and he was brought up on prayer with his mother, Hannah. And so this is what was happening in the temple. And so he had to deliver this message to Eli. But to start with, he didn't even know this was God speaking, he didn't even know this was God's voice. 